Last week, I went through a small section of a recent David Vice presentation, telling you all how I would debate him if I was there. Today, I'm gonna to continue this, and I'm gonna show you all just how I'm gonna debunk all of his points right in front of him. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Raycon. Raycon is on a mission to prove that you shouldn't have to pay an arm and a leg for quality sound and essential smart tech listening features. It is a no BS product. Thanks to Raycon, you're paying half the price for the same, if not better, earbuds. And they don't outsource the design and development of their earbuds. Their small but mighty team of design audio engineers cut their teeth at brands like Bose and Peloton. With Raycon, you get a pair and a spare and still pay less than you would with some of those other big name tech brands out there. Now for me, it's things like the custom gel tips for a perfect, comfortable in-ear fit, the eight hours guaranteed playtime, and the fact that they are water and sweat resistant. Now, as per usual, when the weather starts to get better, I'm out in the garden and nine times out of 10, I'll be listening to TalkSport on my Raycons as I potter around. Raycon knows that in this economy, every purchase needs to be perfect. They offer buy now, pay later options, and you can pay as little as $18 at the checkout. There's also a new offer where you get two years of product protection insurance for just a few bucks. They also offer free domestic shipping, or they can ship internationally for a flat fee, and they have an easy and free return guarantee. It's no wonder Raycon have over 50,000 five-star reviews. Click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash simandan to get 15% off your first order. Right, back to today's video, which is a continuation of David Weiss from DITRH YouTube channel's presentation on the Strange Planet podcast. Let's join him where we last left him, which was discussing out of focus stars. Here we go. Um, I guess what I'm, gravity doesn't, I mean, do, do we believe in gravity? And wouldn't gravity dictate that the, 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 the celestial bodies, the planets and, and our earth would organize as a sphere, as a globe. Now, this is a great point and one in which I've not heard a flat earther discuss or answer before. So that's if you believe in gravity and, and that's a big one and I'm really glad you brought it up. Let's spend a few minutes on this one, if that's all right, because mm. this yes. is a really important one because, you know, um, flat earthers say buoyancy and density sort everything else out. If I had a handful of, um, I had a, a helium balloon some marbles and ping pong balls, and I held them over a pool, and I opened my hands, the helium balloon will go up, the marbles and the ping pong balls will go down, the ping pong balls will stay on top of the water, and the marbles will go to the bottom. That's because of buoyancy and density. But the question is, why are they going down and not sideways or up, you know? And the answer is something's pulling them down. Now, this answer is one that has evolved over recent months for flat earthers. <clears throat> I've long argued that you need an intrinsic down if you want the relative density argument to work. Now, Dave seems to have latched onto this. I wonder what he's gonna say. Now, they have the, the Einsteinian theory of gravity where mass attracts mass, but science has kind of switched over. I mean, that Newtonian gravity, mass attracting mass, and uh, they've switched over to Einsteinian gravity now, which is, uh, which is ridiculous, but let's stick with the, you know, the Newtonian gravity makes mass turn into balls. Um, they say that uh, it's 96% wrong. So they say, well, there's dark matter and dark energy that make up 96% of it. Richard, if you have a theory and 96% of it's wrong and you have to make up something that's never been seen or measured, but you say, oh no, no, it doesn't matter that I made it up. It has to exist or gravity doesn't work. I throw out the, I throw out the theory. So for those of you that don't know, Gravity, according to mainstream science, is just a theory. I don't really know why they keep banging on with this one. At this point, I would ask Dave what a scientific theory is. Now, of course, Dave would probably say that it's a guess or hunch, much like the normal use of the word theory, uh, which obviously that is what it means. Now, I would then show him the meaning of a scientific theory, that it is a well-explained explanation of nature that uses laws and facts. So in the example of the theory of gravity, there is a law in there, Newton's universal law of gravitation. And what about facts? Well, the the fact that everything on Earth, without the aid of air resistance or anything like that, falls at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared every single time. This fact alone destroys any explanation he can give from this point forward. And they, they, have, to, they have to ride it. So, well, if it's not gravity, 
what is it and how can we test? Okay. So the, the, the answer is there's a, there's the electrostatic force negative and positives attract each other. So right now, Dave is trying to explain that the reason things fall down is similar to why a balloon sticks to you when you rub it. That's his argument at the moment. Essentially, that's what it boils down to. Now let's see him expand on that, shall we? Right, if you have a negative force and a positive force, they attract each other. The Earth has a neutral or negative, a zero charge, okay? It's a neutral or negative. You know, that when you ground something, it's grounded. So the Earth has no positive charge to it. It's neutral. And everything in the air is surrounded by a positive charge. So you have this positive charge that says, and the earth isn't moving and it says, hey, down is this way. And then buoyancy and density sort everything else out. So let me, let's see how um, I can do a, a quick demonstration of this. And Okay, let's see his demonstration and then we will wreck his theory. So here's, a, here's the thing. We had some party balloons, helium balloons. And we tied and we got a little button just because for something the metal and we have a wire going to it and it's neutrally floating a couple inches above the floor. This wire goes to a Van de Graaff generator and we're about to put a positive charge into the into the into the um, button. And when we add a positive charge to it, it goes down. And then when we discharge, when we discharge it, it goes back up. OK, so what we what do we do? We increase the positive charge. The Earth is a negative charge. We made it heavier. Now, we didn't make it physically heavy, we made its electrostatic charge heavier. Now, at this point, I would call Dave out for saying something as ludicrous as we are making its electrostatic charge heavier. And then I would question his initial explanation. I would ask him if he's absolutely sure that the Earth is neutrally charged. Now, it is as a whole, but the surface has a slight negative charge. I would then ask Dave about the atmosphere because that's positively charged. But I'd give Dave a chance. I would ask him if he could calculate the electrostatic charge between a ball thrown five meters in the air and the earth. Now, obviously Dave wouldn't be able to do this, but I would continually push and ask him if he could do that to try and prove his point. Now he would try to worm his way out of this, but I would constantly press Dave on this, otherwise he would have to concede his theory. Now of course all of this is irrelevant because I then point out to Dave that all objects, regardless of its electrostatic charge, would fall in a vacuum at the rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. Right, so how can, we, uh, how can we test that the other way? And a lot of you have seen this, you got a tinfoil triangle, we're putting a, uh, a strong negative charge into it and it goes up. So now are we, define gravity or we define the electrostatic charge of the earth. I'm saying we're defining the electrostatic charge of the earth. Every single thing on earth, living or dead, whatever, is has an electrostatic charge. Which makes your claim even sillier. In this world, you'd have countless things floating and falling depending on the electrostatic charge. It's just ludicrous. And if you look at the elements, the lightest elements have the lightest positive charge and every one heavier has one more positive charge. So the higher the positive charge, the higher the attraction, the heavier it is. Lead is way up there with tons of uh, positive um, charge to it. Okay, at this point, I'll be testing Dave on his chemistry. I'll be asking Dave exactly what he thinks an ion is and how they occur. Then I'd ask him to quantify his statement regarding lead. How much charge? Can he figure that out? And I'm sure that would be met with more dodging. Excuse me. MIT created the silent drone. Am I back? I think I'm back. Um, the silent drone. And what they did is they have this drone, no moving parts, no sound, and they just change the electrostatic charge and it flies. It looks like a bunch of uh, pallets and it just flies silently because what are we defying, Richard? The, the, the static charge of the earth or the made up theory of gravity? Right, at this point, I'll be asking Dave if he even researches his points. The silent drone does not work in the way that Dave hopes it works. It creates ions at one point under the drone, which causes the air to rush to the other end of the drone and hence create lift. It's got nothing to do with repelling Earth's charge. At this point, I'll be giving Dave a live dear oh dear. Right, and you have to remember Walter Lewin, the great physics professor, he says, it's electric forces that hold our world together. Walter Lewin, right? Big um, you know, MIT, one of the greatest professors of all time. Yes, but how does this disprove gravity? He's clearly talking about the bonding between atoms here. So the electrostatic charge, here's something else they tell you, and I, and I don't believe them, but this is what science says. The electrostatic charge is 10 to the 36 power stronger than gravity. So let's pretend gravity is real. We have to pretend and we have the electrostatic charge. 
and I drop something. How can anyone claim the made up theory of gravity, which is, you know, the, where electrostatics is 10 to the 36 power stronger? How could you give gravity the credit when the electrostatic charge is 10 to the 36? 10 to the 15th power is a trillion times stronger. 10 to the 15th power is a trillion st- times stronger. So 10 to the 36, I think that's just another made up thing that they say, but they say it. So I'm going to use it. Right. At this point, I'll be asking Dave exactly where he got his information from regarding the 10 to the 29 times more powerful. Because I found where it's from. A physics question about the forces between two ions that are one meter apart. Extremely small particles. I would then pull up the exact reference that he has used and then explain why the gravitational force has more influence than the electrostatic one. Over length scales much larger than the atom size, about 10 to the minus 10 meters, the charges in each atom cancel each other out. All atoms have the same number of protons and electrons, so from farther away, they look neutral. Therefore, the small contribution from gravity is all that remains. Now, hopefully here, Dave would be speechless. Right, well, there we go. Another good section of Dave's presentation covered there. Next week, we'll move on to part three. But for now, we are all done and dusted for another episode of Flat Earth Friday. Thank you so much for joining. It truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed this one, please do consider subscribing to the channel. If you really, really enjoyed it, hit that like button too. And if you are yet to see the first part of this, I'll put a link in the description or you can see it here. Just enough time to once again thank Raycon for sponsoring today. Remember, click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash Simandan to get 15% off your first purchase. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a cracking weekend and I'll see you on Tuesday for the return of Santos Bonucci. See you then. <laughs>